A family adopts a stray Doberman that barks a lot, hoping it will stop bothering them now that it has a home. However, the dog runs away into the night a few days later, and the kids follow. They hear a scary scream and realize the dog was trying to tell them something. The stray dog had been hanging around the house for about three days, causing a bit of a commotion. The family wasn't fond of pets, so they were bothered by it. The children, Nora and Nolan, tried to shoo it away, but it would only whimper and stay put. The dog would bark all day long in front of their house. It seemed well cared for, making them think it wasn't always a stray. However, something about its behavior made them believe it had lost its family. One evening, Nora and Nolan decided to approach it, and when they did, the dog did not move to attack them. It just sat there looking at them with wide eyes and wagging their tails. Perhaps he is lost and needs a home, said Nora. Let's talk to mom and dad. Maybe he could stay with us, Nolan said, and his sister agreed. Together they returned to their parents. Their mother was less than ecstatic at the thought, but their father just shrugged and told them he wouldn't mind having a pet. However, there would have to be some ground rules. The dog would never step into the house, would sleep outside regardless of the weather, and would have to be taken care of completely by the children. Nora and Nolan weighed the options. It seemed like a good bargain to them, so they agreed and went back outside to move the dog to the front porch, where they would build him a cozy space to sleep but the dog kept returning to the entrance of the compound where they had met him. The children did not know what to do. In the end, they decided to let him stay wherever he liked the most and set out to buy a doghouse. Let's call him Titan, suggested Nora, while they assembled it. Why Titan? Nolan asked curiously. He is stubborn as a rock, she replied. He never listened, not when we tried to shoo him away or when we wanted to keep him safe. Her brother raised his eyebrow at her before looking at the dog. We need to wash him and give him a collar so that he doesn't get stolen or lost. Well, we don't exactly own him, so maybe his owner will come for him someday, Nora said. After giving him a good bath, they were satisfied that he looked like a healthy dog again. Later that day, the children looked up Dobermans on Google and found that Titan was quite sweet and affectionate compared to other dogs of his breed. I wonder if he will stop barking now that we have taken him in, their mom mused. Nora and Nolan hoped for that as well. They had gone too long without a good night's sleep and could barely focus on studying during the day. They resolved to take him to the vet the next day if he continued to bark so much. That night, the family had just finished dinner and the lingering warmth of a shared meal filled the air. Titan lay by the front door looking dejected despite the full bowl of dog food in front of him. As the evening settled in, Nora retreated to her room to finish her homework. A stack of textbooks sprawled across her desk. She could see Titan if she peeped out her window, and it somehow made her feel safe because she had started to see him as a protector. She hoped that he too would feel safe now that they had adopted him, and that he would stop with his incessant barking. But that night, Titan began to bark again at exactly twelve. And when she looked out the window, she saw him thrashing around as if he was seeing something that she wasn't. Her heart broke at the sight. Why do you bark so much, Tyken? Do you need to tell us something? She asked no one in particular. She tried to drown out the sound of his barking, but she couldn't help but feel that the dog was desperately trying to catch someone's attention. As promised, the following morning her brother told her to get ready to go to the vet. The doctor checked the dog over but found no wound or hidden illness that could be causing him to bark so much. However, he checked his chip and found out that he belonged to a family who lived a few towns away. He promised to call them as soon as possible and told the children to keep him safe until his rightful owners arrived. In the following days, Titan kept barking day and night. The children's mother was at the end of her rope, and if they were honest, they too were getting tired of a dog that did nothing but bark and thrash around. They thought that adopting a pet would be fun, but Titan's behavior was just frustrating. For the time being, his incessant barking was a mystery, but it was not the only one. On their fifth day together, as the siblings walked home with the dog, they heard people talk about the mysterious disappearance of a young girl in the community. She was a high schooler and the daughter of a famous lawyer who lived a few towns over and had been gone a whole week. The authorities had searched everywhere, yet their efforts had proved abortive. I hope they find her soon, Nolan said. 
Nora thought of what could have happened to the girl. Her disappearance was scary, but another strange detail came to her mind. Titan had appeared at their doorstep around the same time. Do you think Titan senses things that we don't? Just as she said these words, the dog went wild in the streets and began to follow an old man who took to his heels immediately when he saw the Doberman rushing towards him. Nora held his collar, knowing that if she let him go, he might attack the old man. She did not let the collar go until Nolan was able to calm Titan down. They found a way to tie him to a pole and ran to help the man who had fallen on the pavement. We are so sorry about that, the sibling said. If you cannot train a dog, why have one? The man yelled at them as he looked at his bruised knee. He got up and began to walk away while the dog continued barking. Why doesn't Titan like him? Nolan asked. He's just an old man, Nora simply shrugged. The two kids went back home and told their parents what the vet said. Their mom was annoyed because she didn't like dogs and Titan's barking kept her awake. She told them if Titan didn't stop barking, they'd have to give him away. Worried, Nora and Nolan decided to watch Titan closely that night. They didn't talk to their parents about their plan. When it got dark, they went outside and called Titan. He listened but started thrashing around wildly. They followed him as he ran to a rock wall covered in leaves and twigs. He wagged his tail, and they saw a man limping out of a car. He moved the twigs and entered a hidden passage in the rock. They heard a cry from inside, and Titan growled. Nora stopped Nolan from running to the cave. That wasn't the cry of an old man, she whispered. It sounded like a girl's voice. The siblings didn't move, and soon the man came out again. While he was limping towards the car, Nolan rushed to note his license plate number. As the man drove away, they headed for the cave, and what they saw shocked them. It was the missing girl, tied with a rope to a chair. There was blood on her face, and her clothes were torn. Nora immediately removed her jacket and covered her up. Luckily, Nolan had his phone on him, and he immediately called 911. Then he called his parents as well. When they heard Nora's frantic scream on the other side of the phone, they quickly rushed to the woods to comfort their children. The dog continued to wag his tail as he jumped around the missing girl. She was unconscious, and by the time the ambulance arrived, they took her straight to the hospital and took the kids' statements. It was the dog. We thought he was only being a nuisance, but it turned out he had been trying to lead us here. I have the man's license plate number, said Nolan. All right, kids, you should go home now. We'll get back to you in the morning, the officer said. The parents took their children home while the officer secured the scene, but the dog did not stay with them. Instead, he followed the missing girl to the hospital and stood guard by her bed all night. The staff tried to shoo him away, but he kept coming back. In the morning, when her parents arrived and saw the dog, they were delighted. Cody, we thought we lost you, cried the missing girl's mother. Cody? Nora asked as they approached the shouts. They all walked into the room where the parents of the missing girl, whose name was Cynthia, greeted the dog familiarly. Yes, he is Cynthia's dog, and they went missing together, the mother said. So Cody had been trying to call our attention to what had happened to her, Nolan said, and his mom instantly regretted having shown the dog the cold shoulder. When the police arrived, they reported that they had arrested the man. He was the same man Titan had tried to attack after his vet visit. The man had kidnapped Cynthia to get back at his father, who had won a case against him, leading to financial struggles and a grudge. He had kidnapped Cynthia while she was walking with Cody. Titan had been trying to alert the neighborhood about the cave, but couldn't access it himself. He stayed with Cynthia, eventually leading to her rescue. The community praised Titan for his actions, inspiring others to look beyond appearances. Nora and Nolan couldn't keep Titan and had to return him to his owner. Cynthia visited to thank them, saying they were lucky to have Titan. The siblings decided to adopt their own dog, naming him Sky. Cynthia and Sky became friends, and it was a beautiful ending. What do you think of this story? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you.